So that is the reason I personally prefer that you select those Muslim leaders who number one are proud to be Muslims. Unfortunately, when you look at the Muslim leaders, most of them they are not following the Sunnah. I am giving a small example of keeping a beard. It's not a big thing. To keep a beard doesn't take any effort. But our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, as mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, in volume number 7, hadith number 5, that the Prophet said, that do the opposite of what the mushriks do, what the unbelievers do. Grow your beard and trim your moustaches. According to all four schools of thought, all the four ahimmas, keeping a beard is fard. It's such a small effort. But yet, unfortunately, majority, more than 75% of the Muslim leaders who are men, they don't have a beard. Why? That means they're not proud to be Muslims. This is, that doesn't mean if you keep a beard, you have fulfilled all the requirements. No, please don't get me wrong. In requirements, you have to follow the 70 major sins and see how good the person is. So what we have to realize, my basic point here is, that select those Muslim leaders who are proud to be Muslims, even though they may be less in practice. A person who is proud to be a Muslim and a practicing Muslim is the best. Who is practicing and keeping, doing all the farais? I don't think so. If you search, you may find one or two, but on the face of it, I cannot. They may not be good leaders, but they may be following the farais. So here, See to it that you like those who are coming with the Islamic card and those who are proud to be Muslims and present themselves as Muslims are not shy when they meet the non-Muslim leaders. They are not shy to present themselves as Muslims.